Today we're gonna to talk about macros and movement, two of my favorite topics, and why carbs and fats are bad together. Especially in the setting of processed foods, these are highly addictive and rarely occur naturally in nature for a reason. Now I wanna be very clear, fats by themselves, have a negligible impact on our insulin. Remember that's that key hormone that we wanna keep as low as possible, but when you combine them with carbohydrates, you have to really watch out. And I like to think about things like chips and guac, cheese and crackers, how highly addictive they are. It's very hard to monitor ourselves when we're consuming those kinds of foods. These can impact your glucose response in really negative ways and can actually delay gastric emptying, which means it can delay digestion and actually moving food along in your gastrointestinal tract. So let's be clear, what's actually so bad about carbohydrates? I am not anti-carb, I just like you to be as knowledgeable as possible as it pertains to this specific macronutrient. And let's be very clear, bioindividuality rules. The more insulin resistant you are, the less carbohydrates you can tolerate. Let me be very clear, if you have weight to lose, you want to consume less carbohydrates. The more insulin responsive and metabolically flexible you are, the more carbohydrate tolerant you can be. Again, this goes back to bioindividuality. And if you're a middle-aged woman, you have to be even more mindful of your carbohydrate portions. So low glycemic berries, leafy greens, sweet potatoes, root vegetables, are going to be superior choices to tropical fruits like papaya and mango and banana and grapes and processed carbs. It doesn't mean that you would never consume these foods. It just means you do not want them to be a regular part of your diet, especially if you're trying to lose weight. And this is a tie-in to why muscle mass is so, so important as it pertains to metabolic flexibility. Your muscles will actually help keep you more insulin sensitive. Insulin sensitivity is absolutely key for metabolic flexibility. One of my favorite things to suggest and actually do myself is that after a larger meal is to take a walk with my family and dogs and we know that these short bursts of exercise and really just movement will help to reduce our blood sugar levels and this is hugely beneficial you don't have to do a lot after a big meal whether it's thanksgiving or christmas or other holiday festivities i know with covid it's made things a little bit more challenging to navigate also with respect to blood sugar and macros. There are actual gender differences as it pertains to metabolic flexibility. I know this kind of sucks, but we know as women, we are less carb sensitive due to lower glycogen turnover and less lean muscle mass. So you want to maintain your muscle stores. You want to lift weights. You want to do strength training throughout your lifetime because you don't want to deal with the impact of sarcopenia, which is this muscle wasting, which starts to accelerate after the age of 40. So again, remember more muscle mass equals more insulin sensitivity and more metabolic flexibility. And that is the name of the game. We want to be very conscientious about ensuring that as we are getting older, and especially for those that are cycling, you want to recognize that if you're still getting your period, that during the luteal phase, we can be more insulin sensitive and we wanna take advantage of this time because we have more carb tolerance. And this is related to these balances between estrogen and progesterone at the latter part of our menstrual cycle. So the five to seven days preceding your cycle, you have the ability to consume more high quality carbohydrates than less. Stay tuned for more of my blood sugar series.